Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to practice fundamental trigonometric identities, such as reciprocal identities, Pythagorean identities, and tangent cotangent identities. Problem number one. We are going to simplify this expression. So the very first thing that we need to consider is the fundamental identities. But if you don't see any of them, then another thing is the algebraic manipulation. So we're going to factor out. We see that cosine squared x is the common term for all of them. So we're going to pull out cosine squared of x and then rewrite whatever is inside. Here from the first term cosine squared of x is left from the second term sine squared x is left and from the third term 1 is left. If you distribute cosine squared of x inside you get the original expression back. Now we're going to observe fundamental trigonometric identities back. We see that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals to 1 according to Pythagorean identity. So cosine squared x times we have 1 here minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0 and 0 times anything equals to 0. So this expression equals to 0. Problem number 2. In this problem we are going to verify secant theta minus tangent theta times sine theta is equal to 1 over secant theta. So for this we are going to express secant theta as 1 over cosine theta and we are going to express tangent theta as sine over cosine. So we said that secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta using the reciprocal identities minus instead of tangent theta we are going to use tangent identity we know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine and we have another sine theta here so we are going to merge the second part so 1 over cosine theta minus sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta over cosine theta. Now we have common denominator which is cosine theta so we can merge these two fractions. So 1 minus sine squared theta over cosine theta. Now we're going to utilize the Pythagorean identity. We know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. If you solve for cosine here it will be 1 minus sine squared theta. If you subtract sine theta on both sides, you obtain 1 minus sine squared theta. So using the Pythagorean identity, we know that this numerator is equal to cosine squared theta. Now cosine squared theta divided by cosine theta is cosine theta because two factors of cosine divided by one factor of cosine. Now our left hand side is cosine theta and now we can convert cosine theta as 1 over secant theta so we verify that this is true. On problem number 3 we are going to simplify 3 plus sine squared x over 2 minus cosine x minus 2. Our very first step is to replace sine squared x using the Pythagorean identity. So from this equation sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x. So instead of sine squared of x we're going to write 1 minus cosine squared of x. Here if we simplify we obtain 4 minus cosine squared x over 2 minus cosine x. 
Now the next step is to apply difference of two squares here. So difference of two squares will be like this, a squared minus b squared kind of expression will be equal to a minus b times a plus b. Here in our case, our a term is 2 because 4 is 2 squared and our b term is cosine because cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. So we can write 4 minus cosine squared of x as 2 minus cosine x times 2 plus cosine x using difference of two squares over 2 minus cosine x minus 2. Here 2 minus cosine x cancels out 2 minus cosine x. Now we are left with 2 plus cosine x minus 2. Here 2 cancels 2 and our final answer is cosine x. Problem number 4. We are going to verify secant x over cosine x minus tangent x over cotangent x equals to 1. On this problem, we are going to express secant x as 1 over cosine x and tangent x as sine over cosine x and cotangent x as cosine over sine x. Let's rewrite secant x is equal to 1 over cosine x and we have cosine x here on the bottom minus tangent x is equal to sine x over cosine x and cotangent x is equal to cosine x over sine x now we're going to simplify this complex fractions if you have expression like a over b divided by c over d that is equal to a over b times d over c so it is keep change flip keep the first fraction change the division sign into multiplication sign and flip the second fraction so keep change flip we're going to simplify these complex fractions. We can express cosine x as cosine x over 1. So 1 over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. Keep change flip. Minus keep the first fraction sine x over cosine x times flip the second fraction sine x over cosine x. Now we are going to merge 1 times 1 is 1 cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x minus sine x times sine x is sine squared of x over cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared of x. Now we have the common denominator so we can merge 1 minus sine squared of x. So 1 minus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x equals to 1. According to Pythagorean identity, 1 minus sine squared of x is equal to cosine squared of x. Because you can derive it from here, cosine squared of x equals to 1 minus sine squared of x. If you subtract sine squared of x on both sides you get this equation so Pythagorean identity you can solve for sine squared of x or cosine squared of x tangent squared of x or secant squared of x or cotangent or cosine squared of x now we have cosine squared of x over cosine squared of x and anything divided by itself equals to 1 so we verify this expression. Problem number 5. On this problem we are going to simplify this expression. As we observe we see sine squared of x here that we can express as 1 minus cosine squared of x from Pythagorean identity. 
So sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x. So let's rewrite. 1 plus cosine x minus, instead of sine squared of x, we write 1 minus cosine squared of x. And we have negative 1 minus cosine x. Now we're going to distribute negative sign into parentheses and do simplifications. So 1 plus cosine x minus 1 plus cosine squared of x. Here positive 1 and negative 1 cancels and we are left with cosine x plus cosine squared of x over negative 1, negative cosine x. Here we see that cosine is common here. We can factor out cosine x. So cosine x factored from the first term we have 1 and from the second term we have cosine x. One factor of cosine x is outside, one factor is inside cosine x times cosine x is giving me back cosine squared of x. Since we have 1 plus cosine x here, I can make this look like 1 plus cosine x by factoring out negative sign. So it will be 1 plus cosine x. If you distribute negative sign inside, you get negative 1 minus cosine x back. Now, 1 plus cosine x cancels 1 plus cosine x, and cosine x divided by negative sine equals to negative cosine x. So this is our answer. Problem number 6. Here we are going to verify cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. We will start by rewriting cosine squared of x as 1 minus sine squared of x from Pythagorean identity. So according to Pythagorean identity, cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x if you solve for cosine squared of x here. We express cosine squared of x as 1 minus sine squared of x rather than sine squared of x because we need 2 sine squared of x on the right hand side so we substitute this one so instead of cosine squared of x we write 1 minus sine squared of x and we have another sine squared of x here and we have 2 of them which makes 1 minus 2 sine squared of x and we verify this. Problem number seven. We are going to prove that secant squared of x over secant squared of x minus one equals to cosecant squared of x. We are going to express secant squared of x as one over cosine squared of x. So secant squared of x is equal to 1 over cosine squared of x because from the reciprocal identities secant is equal to 1 over cosine x that means secant squared of x is equal to 1 over cosine squared of x. And instead of secant squared x minus 1 we're going to write tangent squared of x because this is another fundamental Pythagorean identity. If you solve for tangent squared of x here, it's going to be equal to secant squared of x minus 1. And instead of tangent, we can write sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. Again, from the tangent identity here. Now we have complex fraction, which is 1 over cosine squared of x over 
sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. Now we're going to apply keep change flip. Keep the first fraction, which is cosine squared of x, times flip the second fraction, which is cosine squared of x over sine squared of x. Here cosine squared of x cancels out cosine squared of x, and we're left with 1 over sine squared of x. We know that 1 over sine equals to cosecant, so 1 over sine squared of x is equal to cosecant squared of x. So left hand side equals to right hand side. On problem number 8, we're going to verify tangent squared theta times sine squared theta equals to tangent squared theta minus sine squared theta. We will start by substituting tangent squared theta as secant squared theta minus 1 from the Pythagorean identity here. And we have sine squared theta here. Now we're going to distribute sine squared theta into parentheses. So from the first expression we have secant squared theta sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now we're going to express secant squared theta as 1 over cosine squared theta. And we have sine squared theta here and minus sine squared theta here. Now we have sine squared theta over cosine squared theta here. We know that sine over cosine equals the tangent. So this is going to be tangent squared theta. So this expression equals the tangent squared theta. And we have minus sine squared theta. So we verify that it is equal to tangent squared theta minus sine squared theta. On problem number 9, we're going to verify that tangent x over secant x plus cotangent x over cosecant x equals to sine x plus cosine x. We're going to express tangent, secant, cotangent, and cosecant as their reciprocal identities. So tangent is sine over cosine x. And secant is 1 over cosine x. Cotangent is 1 over tangent x, which is cosine over sine x. and cosecant equals to 1 over sine x. Now we have two complex fractions, so we're going to simplify them by keep change flip. So sine x over cosine x times flip the second fraction, cosine x over 1 plus keep the first fraction, cosine x over sine x times flip the second fraction sine x over 1. Now we have cosine x cancels cosine x and sine x cancels sine x. We're left with sine x on the first expression plus cosine x on the second expression here. So we can verify that this left hand side equals to sine x plus cosine x. Problem number 10. Let's verify sine theta plus tangent theta over 1 plus secant theta equals to sine theta. We're going to start by substituting tangent theta 
and secant theta simultaneously their reciprocal trigonometric function. So we're going to have sine theta plus instead of tangent theta we have sine theta over cosine theta and on the denominator we have 1 plus instead of secant theta we have 1 over cosine theta. Now we are going to merge sine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta. So if we have a plus b over c kind of expression we can easily add like a times c plus b over c. So we multiply a times c we use the addition sign add b and keep the same denominator. For addition it doesn't matter a is on the left or right so b over c plus a still equals to a times c plus b over c because addition has commutative property but if we have a minus b over c that's going to be still a times c but minus b over c so whatever the sign in the middle we're going to use here but if a is on the right hand side a times c subtracted from b over c because subtraction doesn't have commutative property so these two expression is not equal to each other however these two are equal to each other so we're going to use these properties of fractions now sine theta times cosine theta which is sine theta cosine theta plus sine theta here divided by the same denominator cosine theta we will do the same here cosine theta times 1 is cosine theta plus we have 1 on the numerator divided by the same denominator which is cosine theta now we have complex fraction that we can do keep change flip which is a over b divided by c over d equals to a over b times d over c keep change flip so we're going to keep the first fraction as it is sine theta cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta times we're going to flip the second fraction cosine theta over cosine theta plus one here cosine theta cancels cosine theta and if we factor out sine theta on top sine theta factored out here so we're left with cosine theta from the first expression here and we're left with one from the second expression here and we have cosine theta plus 1 on the bottom. Now cosine theta plus 1 cancels each other and sine theta is the final answer. So we verify that this expression equals to sine theta. On problem 11 we're going to prove that cosine y plus 1 over sine cube of y equals to cosecant y over 1 minus cosine y. Our first step is to break sine cube of y into sine y times sine squared of y. Now, simultaneously, we're going to apply here Pythagorean identity. We know that sine squared of y equals to 1 minus cosine squared of y from the Pythagorean identity here. Now let's rewrite everything. 
we have cosine y plus 1 on the numerator and sine y times 1 minus cosine squared of y on the denominator. Now we can apply difference of two squares here. Difference of two squares is a squared minus b squared equals to a minus b times a plus b expression. So here in our case our a term is 1 and our b term is cosine y. So we can rewrite this as sine y times 1 minus cosine y times 1 plus cosine 1. So we can cancel out cosine plus 1 and cosine plus 1. So now we have 1 on the top and sine y times 1 minus cosine y. Now we can break this into two fractions. It is equal to 1 over sine y times 1 over 1 minus cosine y. We know that 1 over sine is equal to cosecant y from reciprocal identities. So instead of 1 over sine y, we can write cosecant y times 1 over 1 minus cosine y. So if you put together cosecant y over 1 minus cosine y equals to our original problem here. Problem number 12. Here we are going to prove that cosecant fourth of x minus cotangent fourth of x equals to cosecant squared of x plus cotangent squared of x. Our first step is to apply difference of two squares here. If you have a squared minus b squared kind of binomial, that will be equal to a minus b times a plus b. So in our case here, our a term is the square root of the first term, which is cosecant squared of x, and our b term is the square root of the second term, which is cotangent squared of x. So if we place difference of two squares here, we're going to obtain cosecant squared of x minus cotangent squared of x times cosecant squared of x plus cotangent squared of x. Now we can apply Pythagorean identity for cosecant squared of x here. That is going to be equal to 1 plus cotangent squared of x. So 1 plus cotangent squared of x instead of cosecant squared of x and we have minus cotangent squared of x here and the second parenthesis cosecant squared of x plus cotangent squared of x. Here positive and negative cotangent squared of x cancels each other and 1 times this parenthesis equals to again itself cosecant squared of x plus cotangent squared of x. So we have proved that this original expression equals to this. Problem number 13. Here we are going to prove that 1 minus tangent squared alpha over 1 plus tangent squared alpha equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. We are going to start by substituting 1 plus tangent squared alpha as secant squared alpha from the Pythagorean identity. So we have 1 minus tangent squared alpha over secant squared alpha. Now we can separate this fraction because secant squared alpha is the common denominator for both terms on top. So 1 over secant squared alpha minus tangent squared alpha over secant squared alpha. 1 over secant squared alpha equals to cosine squared alpha from the reciprocal identities here. 
and we know that tangent equals to sine over cosine so we can write tangent squared alpha as sine squared alpha over cosine squared alpha and again from the reciprocal identities secant equals to 1 over cosine so secant squared alpha equals to 1 over cosine squared alpha here we have a complex fraction that we can do keep change flip so from the first term here we have cosine squared alpha minus here we can do keep change flip keep the first fraction sine squared over cosine squared alpha times flip the second fraction cosine squared alpha over 1 here cosine squared alpha cancels out each other and what we are left with is cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha since we need two sine squared alpha we can again apply Pythagorean identity here cosine squared alpha equals to 1 minus sine squared alpha from the Pythagorean identity here if you solve for cosine here you're going to obtain 1 minus sine squared alpha subtract sine squared on both sides 1 minus sine squared alpha here we have 1 minus sine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha and we can combine the like terms 1 minus we have two of these so 2 sine squared alpha so we have proven that 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha equals to 1 minus tangent squared alpha over 1 plus tangent squared alpha problem number 14 here we are going to prove that 1 plus cosine x over sine x equals to cosecant x plus cotangent x. Our first step is to separate this fraction. We can rewrite this as 1 over sine x, 1 over sine x plus cosine x over sine x. We know that 1 over sine x equals to cosecant x from the reciprocal identities and cosine x over sine x equals to cotangent x so 1 plus cosine x over sine x equals to cosecant x plus cotangent x problem number 15 here we are going to confirm secant theta times sine theta over tangent theta plus cotangent theta equals to sine squared theta. We are going to start by replacing the reciprocal identities. We know that secant theta equals to 1 over cosine theta from the reciprocal identities here. And tangent theta equals to sine theta over cosine theta and cotangent theta equals to cosine theta over sine theta using tangent and cotangent identities now let's replace everything we have 1 over cosine theta times sine theta on the numerator and we have sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta over sine theta on the denominator now we're going to merge these two fractions on the denominator so if we expand this first fraction with sine theta we obtain sine theta times sine theta over sine theta cosine theta so we have sine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta plus if we expand the second fraction here with cosine theta we obtain cosine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta so we obtained our common denominator sine theta cosine theta so we can merge these two fractions so what we obtain here is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta 
and on top we have sine theta over cosine theta. We know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to 1 from the Pythagorean identity here. So we have sine theta over cosine theta times sine theta cosine theta over 1 because this is a complex fraction and we can do keep change flip. Keep the first fraction here sine theta cosine theta and flip the second fraction sine theta cosine theta over 1. Now cosine theta cancels cosine theta and sine theta times sine theta equals to sine squared theta. So we have confirmed that our original problem equals to sine squared theta. Problem number 16. Here we're going to prove cosecant squared theta times tangent squared theta minus 1 equals to tangent squared theta. Let's start with using Pythagorean identity for cosine squared theta, which is equals to 1 plus cotangent squared theta. So we have 1 plus cotangent squared theta from here times tangent squared theta minus 1. Now we're going to distribute tangent squared theta here. So tangent squared theta times 1 is tangent squared theta plus tangent squared theta times cotangent squared theta is tangent squared theta cotangent squared theta. And we have negative 1 here. We know that cotangent squared theta equals to 1 over tangent squared theta from the reciprocal identities. If cotangent x equals to 1 over tangent x, then cotangent squared of x is equal to 1 over tangent squared of x. So now we have tangent squared theta plus tangent squared theta times 1 over tangent squared theta minus 1. So here tangent squared theta cancels tangent squared theta. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So tangent squared theta plus 0 equals to tangent squared theta. So that proves that our original problem equals to tangent squared theta. Number 17. This time we're going to prove sine theta plus cosine theta the quantity squared plus sine theta minus cosine theta the quantity squared equals to 2. Here we are going to use binomial squares formula. If you have a plus b, the quantity squared, it is equal to a squared plus 2 times a b plus b squared. And if you have a minus b, the quantity squared, then it is equal to a squared minus 2 times a b plus b squared. Here in our case, our a term is sine theta and our b term is cosine theta for a plus b squared. Here our a term is sine theta and our b term is cosine theta for a minus b the quantity squared formula. Now let's apply it. So we're going to write a squared which is sine squared theta plus 2 times a times b a times b is sine theta cosine theta times 2 is 2 sine theta cosine theta plus b squared which is cosine squared theta plus for the a minus b squared formula we have sine squared theta minus 2 times sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared theta We have positive 2 sine theta cosine theta and negative 2 sine theta cosine theta that cancels each other if we add them. And here we are left with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Similarly, we have here sine squared theta 
plus cosine squared theta. And from the Pythagorean identity, we know that this is equal to 1. And 1 plus 1 equals to 2. So we confirm that our problem equals to 2. Number 18. Our very last problem is to confirm that 8 cosine theta times tangent theta times cosecant theta equals to 8. Here we are going to utilize the reciprocal identities. So we have 8 cosine theta and instead of tangent we can write sine theta over cosine theta using the tangent identity here. And instead of cosecant theta we can write 1 over sine theta. Here, cosine theta cancels cosine theta, and sine theta cancels sine theta, and 8 times 1 equals to 8. This was pretty easy, but you need to see that you need to replace reciprocal identities. This is it for fundamental trigonometric identities. On the next video set, we're going to go through more advanced trigonometric identities. Thank you for watching.